Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. And here is today's news in electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee and this is your EV News Daily for Saturday the 10th of March 2018. A couple of great roundup articles, by the way, that I can recommend. The first one's on autoexpress.co.uk, magazine here in the UK that uh, had a lot of journalists at the Geneva Motor Show and they've done a roundup article of all their favourites. I highly recommend you check that out as Geneva, as the press days of Geneva come to an end at least and it opens up to the public. And according to Popular Mechanics, they've listed out their favourite seven electric vehicles they saw at Geneva. Let's go through them. In first place, they put the Polestar 1. They point out the two electric motors that drive the rear wheels and a turbo supercharged 2-litre engine that drives the front wheels makes that a great combination. I'm not so sure I would like a pure EV Polestar 1. Also bear in mind what Popular Mechanics don't mention, Polestar 1 isn't going to be made very soon. When it is made, it's going to be on a very limited run. Uh, there's confusion at the moment over whether you lease or buy. I thought that they were only going to sort of rent you the car on a like a mobile phone or a cell phone package equivalent. Now it turns out if you've got enough money, you could buy one. There's conf- confusion over that. Either way, left-hand drive only. So here in the UK, you could buy one, but you'll be on the wrong side. But if you're in Europe, then you'll be on the right side but it's the left side. In second place, they put the Lagonda Vision. Yeah, this is Aston Martin reviving the legendary Lagonda brand, and uh, they're going to put batteries in the floor, as is pretty common now, and motors in the wheel hubs, which was interesting, and they say when they start to make EVs, in a couple of years' time, some design work to do first. Solid-state batteries will be in a position to be used rather than the batteries being used at the moment. Is that wishful thinking? We'll see. They also mentioned the Volkswagen ID Vision, a uh, vision with all the Zs, a peek into what autonomous cars could look like when they no longer come with steering wheels or pedals controllable only by your voice and gesture if you do want to move it around manually. Steering wheels are here to stay, though. Thank you very much to VW for providing what cars might look like in 2022. I'm all for futuristic visions, but taking away the steering wheel and the pedals? Yeah, that's not four years away. Well, the Honda Urban EV gets a special mention in their countdown. The uh, windshield or windscreen spanning touchscreen cleans up the entire dashboard and replaces all of the switchgear and gauges, both modernist and utilitarian at once. I think that was the model where the screens even went into the door panels as well. Now, the Honda e Urban EV is going to go into production in 2019. Honda have confirmed a version of that will be released, not the version you've seen at the Tokyo Motor Show and at Geneva, because, well, for one, right, screens going all around the doors and in front of you, it would cost £100,000 to buy a little mini. Uh, next, Honda Sports EV isn't confirmed to be going into production, but it might do. It's a proper sports car, real low centre of gravity, and a part design choice and part a result of the now standard packaging of batteries in the floor. After a few years of car makers retrofitting batteries into the existing shape, see the Volkswagen e-Golf, which is a great car by the way, but do bear in mind, soon there's going to be a proper VW EV in the ID. Now, they haven't said whether that is going to replace the Volkswagen e-Golf, probably because, well, they want to sell lots of Volkswagen e-Golfs, but it could soon be old news because there's going to be a Volkswagen around that is custom designed for for batteries and, and kind of the EV platform. That's what Honda say is the ultimate way. Batteries in the floor, get it all out the way. Now, Popular Mechanics also talk about the Renault EZ Go. Did you see this? The EZ Go is Renault's vision of the future taxi. A fully autonomous glass box. You hail it from your phone like an Uber, and you get in through a front hatch and sit in a U-shape of people. Again, this is a little bit Blade Runner wishful thinking in the future. Not sure that's just around the corner. And they finish off by highlighting the new Formula E racer. And now on this one, I do agree with them. Heading into its fifth season for 2018-19, Formula E says goodbye to the first-gen car and hello to the second-generation racer. Looks like the Batmobile. And it was on show for the very first time at Geneva in the flesh. And I've been checking out the pictures, and it does look so gorgeous when it's not just rendered, but in the kind of carbon fibre. I was going to say in the metal, but it won't be metal. In the first season, drivers had to, uh, well, the first four seasons, drive and had to swap cars halfway through the race. The new Formula E car doubles uh, capacity from 28 kilowatt hours to 54 kilowatt hours. 
enough juice to run the entire race, more battery power. You know what? I will kind of, after four seasons of Formula E, I'll kind of miss seeing the drivers hop out of a car. Kind of got used to it. Still looking forward to next year. Now, our second countdown is the top five reasons to lease your car, to lease an EV. Now, I thought I would uh, I would take a look at this because this article that cropped up into my news feed said that leasing is increasing in popularity, making up 30% of all new car sales. Not sure where that's at, US, UK, Europe, or what. Uh, but when it comes to electric vehicles, they say 80%, 80%, at least, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance. That excludes Teslas, by the way, which sell directly to consumers and don't report their leasing data. This website is called Nerd Wallet, uh, where we found this, and they use research from Swapper Lease. Surprise, surprise, it's a leasing company. Here are their top five reasons why the next car you buy should be leased. Okay, their first reason, you can get tech upgrades faster if you lease a car. Year-to-year changes, they say, in conventional cars are often minimal, but the technology going into EVs means that each year sees more range, more performance, and more autopilot features. Therefore, lease an EV, get one more often. I would say that's entirely wrong. Over-the-air updates in cars like Tesla's and the new Jaguar I-Pace, and even... If you have to, take in your Nissan Leaf back to the dealer to get it uh, a a flash upgrade because they've done a few things to it, Uh, means that the EV you buy today will not be the car you're driving in a year's time. EV makers are increasingly software companies rather than companies that press bits of metal and assemble spark plugs and diesel filters and things. So they're constantly improving. You haven't got to lease a car to get a better car. The car you've got is going to be a better car this time next year. All right, the second reason they give is that you will avoid steep depreciation. They say if you bought an electric car and decided to sell it a year later, its value, they say, will have depreciated dramatically like a used bed sheet, as one person wrote on Autotrader. Not sure where they get the data for for this. That is blatantly wrong. In the UK, at least, in the last year, used EV values actually increased. They went up slightly. Buy a Nissan Leaf 12 months ago, sell one now, at least here in the UK, you'll have made money. When was the last time a car, apart from a classic car, actually made money? I'm not telling you to buy an EV in his investment. Things on four wheels with motors and engines go down in value. But in the last year in this country, EVs haven't. All right, reason number three. Let's keep an open mind. Uh, Battery quirks aren't your problem, they say. Lithium-ion batteries that power EVs are relatively new. This is what they say. Uh, There's there's not a lot of data on how long they last and how quickly they'll stop holding full charge. Who wrote this article? Blatantly wrong. They say lithium-ion batteries that power EVs are relatively new. No, they're not. They've been new since the 1980s. And so there's, there's no data on EV batteries and how long they'll possibly last. Okay, so take one instance. It was a survey uh, using some crowdfunded data last year. I think it was mostly Norwegian data. It was from Tesla Model S owners, and they submitted their data of how many miles they've done how much the battery was was digging it was there was barely any degradation on the Tesla batteries uh, the the longest that any of the cars had driven i think it was 250,000 kilometers on there was a real outlier the longest tesla that submitted the data and how much of the battery was was still working it was an enormous amount now certainly cars like the tesla have a long battery warranty the jaguar i-pace announced this week for instance has an eight year battery warranty all of the car manufacturers have long battery warranties and failure rates are tiny low when was the last time you heard of an ev battery failing yeah i can't think of any if you're that worried about it get a, a, a renault zoe ze40 and lease the battery Let's move on and see what this lease company is saying, reasons you should lease your EV. They continue, you get incentives more often. Electric cars are incentive magnets, they say. Federal and state governments want to reward EV owners to support clean energy. Uh, That's their fourth reason. Well, that's wrong, because tax tax credits in the US, at least, are ending for some models. Uh, If you buy a model, if you order a Model 3 now, you won't get a tax credit on it. When manufacturers get to 200,000 units, those tax credits are running out. There's nothing guaranteed, at least here in the UK, and all the European countries don't use that model so much. They use kind of more of a grant, but none of those are are guaranteed long-term. They could all end 
So that's, I don't know where they get that from. All right, the, fi- the fifth reason why this lease company has put an article online saying you should lease your next EV. You can scoop up loyalty bonuses. Car makers offer both loyalty and conquest bonuses to try and retain customers and lure shoppers away from the competition. That's what they say. Okay, here's a question for you. What EV maker has a loyalty bonus? Okay, so you can, you've got Tesla referral codes. That's not a loyalty bonus, though, really, is it? And apart from that, who else does referral codes? What other EV makers have loyalty bonuses? Uh, seriously, I, it's because I don't know. I don't know any that will give you a loyalty bonus if you lease your EV through them or through this lease company. If, have you, if you've ever heard of a loyalty bonus to lease your EV, then email me. The email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Uh, feel free. Uh, let me know and correct me. That's the top five reasons you should lease your EV according to Nerd Wallet website and also the lease company that they swap a lease actually i don't mind naming them i'm sure they're a great company but uh, i just happen to d- disagree with their top five uh, let me ask you another question how many lease companies do you know of that go broke yeah none you know who lease companies are making money out of you that is really cheeky to put an article online some of which which is a bit naughty and some of which is blatantly wrong i might have to email the webmaster and go where did you get your data because that's just a lie if you want to buy a brand new ev then go for it and there's loads of great finance deals out there but Bear in mind, you'll be doing that and you'll be losing money on the deal. The best way to buy an EV, probably a car auction that's coming off a two or three year lease and you'll be there with car dealers and they have their bottom line of what they need to put the mark up on. I I imagine the best way at the moment to get the very best price on an EV. The best way to buy a car, of course, is with cash to get the best price deal now uh, my wife by the way uh, really wants the, uh, a bmw i3 new or used doesn't mind she wants the rex because just because she has the occasional long journey and she just wants that she's not quite as severe as i am and just wants that peace of mind of you know i just want an engine in the back that if i really need it we could use it but we haven't bought one yet because you know why in this country they're 15 or sixteen thousand pounds at auction coming off a two or three year lease and i haven't got fifteen thousand pounds spare And when we do have it, we'll buy one. And I'm certainly not going to get an EV on a lease based on those five reasons. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, I don't mind. I might be wrong. Uh, Email me. It's hello at EV News Daily or leave a comment on here. Uh, Thank you for listening today. You can leave a comment on the blog, which is evnewsdaily.com or on any of the podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. We're on. I put the audio on YouTube just because I know some people love to listen to audio only things on YouTube. Please take some time to thumbs up, thumbs down or a star review on iTunes. We're on Amazon Echo. You can download the skill called EV News Daily on Twitter. Come and say hi at EV News Daily, and I will catch you tomorrow for Sunday's update.